Hi everyone, Miss Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we will be studying the fourth grade science book, Soils, Rocks, and Landforms, Investigation 2, Landforms, Part 4, Fossil Evidence. Question, how do fossils get in rocks and what can they tell us about the past? Let's find out. In previous investigations, we learned how big rocks eroded into smaller and smaller pieces called sediment and were deposited in new locations down a hill or a river. The low-lying areas where sediments are deposited are called basins. As sediment is deposited in the basins and millions of years pass, the sediment hardens. As the bottom layer hardens, new layers are deposited on top, which converts the lower layers into stone, which is a process called lithification. Lithos is a Greek root word for rock, and fication is a Latin root word for making or causing. The rock that is made is a sedimentary rock called banded sandstone. This is a sample of the sedimentary rock called banded sandstone up close. Sedimentary means that it was made from sediment. It's called banded because you can see stripes or bands in it, and it is called sandstone because it is made of compacted or lithified sand. At one time, our banded sandstone looked like this. But after millions of years and lots of heavy layers of sediment are placed on top of the sand, the sand is converted into stone or lithified. Sometimes scientists dig up rocks and find something like this. This is shells trapped in sediment that has been lithified. These are known as fossils. Our focus question for today is how do fossils get into rocks and what can they tell us about the past? First, what is a fossil? The word fossil is from a Latin word meaning dug up. So a fossil is the remains or an impression of a prehistoric organism preserved in rock. There are many types of fossils, but the ones we will be investigating today are mold and cast fossils. First, we're going to take this ball of clay and press it into the bottom of a cup. This is our first layer of sediment deposited into our basin. Next, we're going to take this shell and press it into our clay. Shells are made of calcium carbonate. So after a few thousand years, the shell dissolves, leaving us a negative image in our first layer of sediment. This is called a mold fossil. Not the kind of mold that's a fungus, but a mold that can form shapes. Next, we're going to mix some plaster of Paris. And this is going to be our subsequent layers of sediment for our fossil. As years pass, layers and layers of sediment cover our shell and its mold. And after a million years passes, the sediment lithifies or becomes rock. Now that our rock has sat for a few million years and solidified, let's remove our rock. 
from the basin. Remember, this is an example of a mold and cast fossil. This side is the mold, so that's where our shell was pressed in, and this side is the cast. Pretty cool. There are other types of fossils, such as this one. This is an imprint of a fern. These are called imprint fossils or trace fossils. Footprints in mud are also known as trace fossils. Fossils of dinosaur bones are called body fossils. Body fossils are fossils of hard parts, such as teeth, bones, woody trunks, branches, and shells, like the shells that are fossilized in this rock. A fossil of poop is called coprolite. I threw that in because kids always like facts about poop. To reiterate our focus question for today, how do fossils get into rocks and what can they tell us about the past? As sediment flows into a basin, animals are deposited into the basin too. Every time a layer of sediment is deposited, plants and animals from that time period get deposited also. That tells scientists what plants and animals existed then, some of which may not exist now. If we look at our banded sandstone, each band represents a layer of sediment deposited at different times. So you can think of each layer as a snapshot of time, where the older layers are on the bottom and the newer layers are on top. That is the principle of superposition. Super in Latin means over. Position also in Latin means to place. The new layers of sediment are placed over the older layers. Scientists can dig into sedimentary rock to find fossils, and they know that the deeper they dig, the older the fossils will be. That is the principle of superposition. So the old sediment is on the bottom, and the newer sediment is laid over, and the newest is on top. What kind of rock are most fossils found? Remember that fossils are found in the deposits of sediment. When sediment is lithified or converted to stone, it is called a sedimentary rock. Now, what if I found this fossil of seashells high up in a mountain? Or if I found a fossil of a fish high up in a mountain? Well, that would tell me that this mountain was once covered in water. So either the water level was so high that it covered the mountain, or the mountain was once flat ground and the tectonic plates on the Earth's surface collided to create a mountain, and the mountain grew from beneath the water surface. That would give scientists evidence that the surface of the Earth was much different than it is today. Now let's review the vocabulary for this investigation. Basin. A geological basin is a large, low-lying area where sediment collects. Lithification. The conversion of sediments into solid rock. Sedimentary rock. Rock that has formed through the deposition and solidification of sediment. Banded sandstone. A sedimentary rock consisting of lithified sand with narrow stripes or bands of different colors. Fossil, the remains or impression of a prehistoric organism preserved in rock. 
Mold and Cast Fossil, a three-dimensional impression of remains buried in sediment. The organism creates a mold in the rock like this, and the subsequent layer of sediment creates a cast of an organism like this. Superposition, the placement of one thing above or on top of another. The principle used to determine whether one layer of sedimentary rock is older than another. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's investigation on fossils. Until next time, have a great day.